All right, so this is a review of what I've titled Measuring Species Diversity or Biodiversity. So um, biodiversity, remember, is the variety of plants and animals um, in an ecosystem. So all the different wild plants and animals in an ecosystem. That would be species diversity. Or bio means living, the diversity of, of living things. And we're kind of heading into um, the next part of our unit where we're going to talk about the loss of biodiversity. What humans are doing to cause a decline in wild plants and wild animals. Or a loss of the variety. So you'll often hear people say, oh, there's been a loss of biodiversity. I'd like to start with this topic first. How do we actually measure that? So if someone makes the claim, the tropical rainforest um, in the Amazon is less diverse than 50 years ago. Okay, well, how do you support that claim? What's your evidence? And in science, that evidence has to be data. It has to be numbers, right? So you have to collect data, you have to analyze that data to support a claim of loss of biodiversity, right? Or if a place is improving, you might say, Yellowstone Park with the addition of the wolves, the biodiversity is increasing. There's an increase in the, the variety of plants and animals. Well, what's your data to support that claim? And I had kind of a comparison, I don't know if it's an analogy, but there's just been a 2020 census. So things were sent to your house or workers came by and asked all kinds of questions. How many people live here? Um, what's the ethnicity, the gender, the education level? What job do you do? Do you live in the country, the city, the suburb? And they collect all this data. And you can go to the US census website and you can download all these data tables, right, with all this data. And then you could use that to support claims or to make, draw some conclusions. So let's say someone asked this question, which is more diverse in terms of ethnicity, Fresno or Sanger? And let's say I made the claim, Fresno. I think Fresno is more ethnically diverse. Well, I need some data. I need some evidence to support that claim, right? So I could go and download all these data tables, but they're kind of meaningless without a little analysis. Maybe you have to make some graphs of certain types of data. Or there's some mathematical formulas you can use to analyze the data. And then that, you might be able to find something to support your claim. So that's what I'm talking about here. It's called the Shannon Weaver Diversity Index. It's a mathematical formula. You plug some data in about the species in an ecosystem, and you plug it into the formula, and you end up with a number, an index, it's called. And this number tells you how diverse an ecosystem is. It quantifies it, we call it. Quant quantifies it. So the Shannon or Shannon Weaver Diversity Index, um, the symbol is this letter H with an accent or a prime. It's a measure of species diversity, how much variety of species are there in an ecosystem. It takes into account all the different species and how evenly they're distributed. So do you have a little bit of, of everything or is it mostly 100% um, sea stars and nothing else? You know, Is there variety even um, within the species in your ecosystem? And it quantifies it, a quantity means a number. It puts a number to it. So you can't just say, yeah, it looks like this one's more diverse. I think there's more plants and animals in this ecosystem. This mathematical formula actually puts data into a formula and gives you a number that quantifies like, yes, this number is bigger, so this ecosystem has more diversity than another. And I put why important. It's really most helpful for comparison when I'm comparing two different study sites, two different tide pools, or I'm looking for change over time. Maybe I study a forest starting in 1960 all the way till now. And I can say, oh, over the course of many decades, the Shannon Weaver Diversity Index is declining. That means there's less diversity in this forest. Or maybe like change after an event. If I'm studying a forest and I'm studying it for decades and then there's a forest fire, I can do, look at the Shannon Weaver Diversity Index before the fire and after, and that'll give me a, um, data to support is it more or less diverse after the fire. So you can collect data and then you plug it into this formula and it actually gives you a number and that number can tell you how diverse. The bigger the Shannon Weaver Diversity Index, the more variety in an ecosystem. So I had a student, it's easiest to look at an example. I had a student many years ago named Andy Wells and Andy um, took an environmental science class, an introductory, introductory one at Pepperdine University in Malibu, in LA, right on the beach. And um, 
near his school was a tide pool, um, and it was called Malibu Beach. So he identified this as his study site, and there are a lot of houses, a lot of people, um, a lot of human impact near this tide pool. All right. So he identified the species in his tide pool study site, and how many of each species. So here's his data table. And I simplified it a little bit from his actual report to make it easier for us. Um, he obviously had the scientific name and such. But So near Malibu Beach, he went out to the tide pool. He marked a meter by meter plot. And in that plot, he found eight purple sea stars, the kind of purpley kind of looking sea stars. And he found 11 green anemones. They kind of look like flowers or kind of a green blue. He found 11 of those in his meter by meter plot. So 8 plus 11 is 19. So there were 19 individual species, that's the abundance, and there were two different types of species. That's called species richness. But he had a second study site called Latigo Beach. It was on the same kind of shoreline, but a, a bit further down. Um, it was away from any houses or human impact. It was more isolated, a little harder to get to. And so he did the same thing. He counted the species and the types of species in Latigo Beach um, in that type pool. And he did a meter by meter plot, and he found two orange anemones, seven purple urchins, three white anemones, and these kind of closed, slimy army green kind of anemones that were kind of closed up. They were kind of slimy army green. So there were four different species. That's the species richness. And if you add seven plus three plus three plus two, you get 15. So 15 total individuals. So just upon looking at it, he's like, hey, Latigo Beach, it looks more diverse. There's more species. It just looks more. Like there's more variety as compared to Malibu Beach. But he had to prove it. He needed some data. He needed to actually measure it. He needed to use this Shannon Diversity Index. So I'm going to show you how he did that um, on paper. So basically, here we go. So the formula looks like this. So that's the symbol for the Shannon Diversity Index. This stands for the sum, meaning we're going to add it all up. This is a negative, and you'll see why there's a negative here in a minute. And then it's a p with a little i times the log of a p with a little i. That is the formula, the Shannon Weaver Diversity Index. You might be saying, well, okay, whatever, what does that mean? Well, there's really a step-by-step -step process to work through it, and I will show you that using Andy's example. So this part we're going to save for later. This is the sum meaning we're going to add everything up at the end. And you'll see our result is a negative. Well, a negative times a negative makes a positive. So in the end, that's just going to make it a positive number. So right now, that's not such a big deal. We want to focus on, like, what's this? What's this PI thing here? What is that? Right? Well, I think of it like this. Think of P stands for part or proportion. And I is the symbol for species. So what part of the total does each species make up? So if I look back at Andy's example, right here, look back. The purple sea star, there's eight out of a total of 19 individuals. So eight out of 19, that is the part that is the purple sea star. So, all right. P stands for part. Think of it like this. So I've got the purple sea star. Eight. Eight out of 19. So there's eight purple sea stars out of a total of 19 individuals. That's the part that is sea star, right? And then let's take a look here. 11 were green anemones. 11 out of 19 total individuals was the green anemone. So that is the part that is the green anemone. Spell that right. So 11 out of 19, 11 out of 19, that's the part that is green anemone. So that's what the P means, think of it as proportion or part. But I want to get this into a decimal, it's going to be easier to work with. So I like this little calculator, it's a free one, you can get the app or online called Desmos. I think Miss um, Dan Beston uses it. And I just like it because it really shows things like a graphing calculator. So I'm going to go to the main. And I'm like, okay, eight purple sea stars divided by 19 total individuals. It's a really long, long number, so I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to round it off to just 0.42. It's 0.4210. So 
I'm going to say 0 0.42. So 8 divided by 19 is 0 0.42. That is my P sub i, my P, the part that is purple C star. And then I times it by the log oh, of the same thing, P i, 0 0.42. So basically, you figure out the part of the total that each species makes up. You divide to get a decimal. And that's it. So I've got that, that, so that times a log. That's it. And you do it for each species. So 11, 11 divided by 19. And it's really long, so I'm going to be lazy. 0 0.5789. I'm going to say 0 0.58. I'm going to go with 0 0.58. So I'm going to say, okay. so all this P with the little I, it's the part of the total that each species makes up. So I have to do it for each species, there are only two. 8 out of 19 is 0.42, 11 out of 19 is 0.58, and then it's just that times the log of that. All right, now i got to solve it, right? I'm like, okay, I'm going to put it into my little calculator here, so 0.42 times the log of 0.42. Let's see what we got. And that's why I kind of like this Desmos, it's like a graphing calculator. I have to go to function, because there's log, but it looks just like I wrote it down, 0.42 times the log of 0.42. I got my answer right there, and it's really long, so as always, I'm lazy, I'm going to round off. Negative. 0.158. So I'm going to say negative 0.16. I'm saying negative 0.16. So this equals negative 0.16. All right. Now I got to do this one. 0.58 times the log of 0.58. Calculator. Clear all that away. 0.58 times the log of 0.58. All right, let's round this off to make it easy. Negative 0.137, I'm going to say negative 0.14 if you guys are okay with that. I'm like, okay, equals negative 0.14. All right, so for each species, I've done this. I did it for the purple sea star, green anemone. If there were more species, I'd do it for all of them. All right, now the last step is the sum. And remember there's this negative, so these answers are negative. Remember, a negative times a negative makes it a positive. So the end result will be positive. And this means sum. It just means I have to add them up. So 0.16 plus 0.14 is that. So that is my Shannon Weaver diversity index. On its own, it's not really all that exciting or that meaningful. It's really about comparison. I need to compare it. So I, ahead of time, did Latigo Beach. If you remember, Andy went to two beaches. That was for Malibu Beach, right? I'll write that on here. That was for Malibu Beach, but he also went to Latigo Beach and collected data. So there were four species, orange anemone, purple urchin, white anemone, and those slimy green things. So I did it ahead of time. So there were four species. So now I have to do this four times. One, two, three, four. You have to do it for each species. Every ecosystem might be different. Some may have 10 species. So for the orange anemone, there were two, two orange anemones out of a 15 total, because 2 plus 7 plus 3 plus 3 is 15. So 2 out of 15 was orange anemone, 7 out of 15 was the purple urchin, 3 out of 15 was the white anemone, and 3 out of 15 was the slimy green things. Okay? So 2 out of 15 was the orange anemone, right? So on. Well, 2 divided by 15 is 0.13, so that's my PI times the log of the PI. 7 divided by 15 was 0.47, so that's my PI times the log of that. The white anemone, there were 3 out of 15. The 3 divided by 15 is 0 0.20 times the log of that. And the slimy green things, there were 3 of them, so that's 0 0.20 times the log of that. So I figured it out, and again, it's a negative, but a negative times a negative, your final answer is positive. And this means sum. This means I have to add them up. So 0 0.12, 0 0.16, 0 0.14, add up, and I got 0 0.56. So that is the Shannon Weaver Diversity Index for Latigo Beach. So now I can compare. That's what's important. 
So for Malibu Beach, she got 0 0.30 for the Shannon Weaver Diversity Index. For Latigo Beach, 0.56. Generally, the higher the Shannon Weaver Diversity Index, the more diverse an ecosystem is considered. So Latigo Beach, at Andy's conclusion, Latigo Beach was the more diverse beach, the more diverse ecosystem because its Shannon Weaver Diversity Index was higher. And that's it. That's it. So that was his final conclusion. Okay. There are a couple other things you can do. Um, data um, you can put into a formula. There's something called HMAX. With two species, what's the biggest Shannon um, Weaver Diversity Index you could get? The maximum Shannon Weaver Diversity Index you could get with two species. So it's the log of S. And like, wait, what's S? It's this. S is the number of species. So in Latigo Beach, there were four. One, two, three, four. In Malibu Beach, there was two. One, two species. So in Malibu Beach, there were one, two species. So it's the log of two. So if I go to my Desmos, clear all, and I'm like log of two, not 0 0.30. So actually, this is as diverse as you can get with two species. That's the biggest the Shannon Weaver diversity could be. That's as you know, good as it gets. If I do it for give me a sec, Latigo Beach, there were four species. So log of four is 0 0.60. So this is pretty close to as diverse as it could get for four species. Sometimes scientists will use that kind of as help. But truthfully, I think the comparison is the most important thing. Malibu Beach had a lower Shannon Weaver diversity index than Latigo. So Latigo is considered more diverse. So you are going to do this for the forest, the same exact thing. There's no Part B. Part B I'll show you on Friday. So there's a little background. I reviewed the key terms. Everything's got to be handwritten in your notebook. Show your work. Take a picture and upload to Teams. And you're going to figure out the Shannon Weaver Diversity Index for Forest 1 and Forest 2. Just like I did with the two tide pools. There's two forests. We do the same thing. Right? So if you look at this student example, for Forest 1, which is kind of small, she's like, all right, there's 44 white fir trees out of 82. There's 44 white fir trees out of a total of 82. So what part is white fir? 0.54, because 44 divided by 82 is 0.54 times the log of 0.54. She did the same for each tree species. And then she added it up to get her index. So that's what you're going to do. And then there are three simple questions. It says draw a sketch that visually illustrates the four. So I would like color code, like make the white fur a color, red fur a color, and then just use dots to represent the trees. But I know it sounds strange, but sometimes a visual helps. So like I said, pick a color for each tree and maybe use dots. What would forest one look like compared to forest two? And then which one's more diverse based on your Shannon Weaver diversity index? And then what activity do you think would cause a forest to be less diverse than another? So don't worry about it looking perfect. You're going to handwrite it all in your notebook. And just practice. You know, with math, you kind of got to practice, right? And then on Friday, I'll show you part B, and we'll practice that and make sure we're good to go, that we got it. All right, well, hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a great day.